Well, welcome to uh, part 7. So, here's the tank now. Uh, up to now. I uh, just added a couple of extra bits since the last uh, since the last lesson. I just uh, redid these lights. Just uh, they're not much different, but I just uh, added a few more details and uh, tidied them up a little bit, made them a bit cleaner. Um, what else? I just added these uh, onto the front, um, sort of hooks and things for uh, towing. And that's pretty much it. I, I copy and pasted the uh, the weapon mount uh, platform <coughs> into the main tool and just uh, positioned it and just hid the uh, the other door, just the bay doors. So um, with all that done now, um, I'm pretty much ready to start modeling the um, uh, the twin uh, the mounted uh, twin heavy bolters uh, on the turret. So uh, that's what we'll, we'll get down next for this lesson. Well, we'll start as usual here with a primitive cylinder and uh, make polymesh 3D. And I'm just going to make it a, a quick cylinder with more res on the uh, on the Z and the X. So we can start with um, when I need these uh, edge loops in place. So that's why I didn't start with just the regular primitive cylinder with the capped off triangulated uh, top. So what I'm doing is I'm masking and then I'm using um, just the transpose move as a kind of a scale tool to flatten out all those verts. Similar to you might do in a 3D package where you just use your scale tool and they're all verts to, uh, to flatten them out. And I'm just adding a couple of uh, edge rows here. So this is um, going to be a good example of um, complex kind of square um, kind of shapes cut into a circle. Uh, cylinder so I'm just adding in the required uh, edge rows needed here and one here for the thickness of the Q mesh and uh, this is just like a little sort of a pattern that we're going to inset or sorry um, Q mesh in extrude in to the mesh and um, just using the slide vert tool there just to move some of them around to get the shape that I'm looking for so it's a kind of a you know stepped up and down sort of a pattern so I'm going to do the same thing here just by <coughs> masking and inverting and just scaling those um, verts to just uh, missed one and I think I missed another one there so I'll just use the uh, slide vert just pull that into place straighten it up and add in another edge row and I'll tag them faces and that got a bit messed up so um, I think you end up just using the normal uh, shift smooth brush and zebra brush just to kind of take that messiness out of it so I'll just mirror and weld them on um, X and Z and mirroring just to flip it across the uh, the positive axis in here even though they got messed up with the mirror so I'm just using the smooth brush there and retake that raw away and add it back in and then just clip off to uh, clean it up again and you can see where it's clipped it's, it got a bit messed up so Just uh, we still have the, those faces tagged, so Q mesh down, and now we just crease with our tolerance set and uh, drop the crease level down. So when we subdivide, it'll uh, it'll crease up to those levels, and then after that uh, threshold, the crease level threshold, it'll it'll round out those sharp edges. So this time I'm going to use the. Uh, was the trim curve just to, that'll uh, I didn't use it again then so I have a messed up kind of <coughs> topology in the bottom where I clipped it so I was saying if you clip sort of complex geometry it's going to uh, squash everything down 
which isn't really ideal for this kind of modeling so you see what well it's done there so I end up just using the shift the smooth brush just smoothing it all out just to see what the hell's going on so that's just uh, uh, the limitations of the clip brush well not the limitations it's, it's the way it's designed to work but um, it's no problem because we can just use the uh, the trim uh, trim core brush then and that'll just slice everything off and uh, <coughs> get rid of that messy topology and just uh, press the crease again and you'll see a bit of sort of strangeness going on but it's all part of the process of uh, it gets fixed up because as I say it's um, this is a cylindrical shape and we're adding so many extra edge rows that are running out over the edge it's, it's changing the shape of the cylinder when it's subdivided So just taking a look around and I want to start them um, adding in some more rows so that we can uh, Q mesh a few more sections down just to give some more uh, some more detail. And I just used a while ago there, I forgot to mention I used the clip circle there just to kind of tidy up the shape. Now I'm going to just uh, raise that um, <coughs> Q mesh flat oil and just to raise that up, F just for more separation between the, the detail that we extruded down. Took taking a look around with the subdivision on, polyframe off just to see any strangeness in the mesh. see here where it's not completely flat so I'm just going to move polygroup oil and move it up and use the clip brush just to flatten that all off and just do the same there raise it up polygroup, polygroup oil and with the move tool or Q mesh with shift tail down and uh, flatten that all off and then just move it back down into place Now we can see we're adding those extra edge loops in, takes away from the kind of circular um, look at the cylinder. But it's it's all stuff that you know it's can be all fixed up. So I'm just depending in them um, with the next part of this uh, piece. cube and then just get it into position scale it up scale it down get it into position and just get washing it in there with the, the move and um, moving it into position Squashing it down a bit more. And then we'll just add in our edge loops to um, give us uh, some more topology to extrude the thickness. And then just Q mesh. And Q mesh again, leaving that chamfer on the back. And a few more edge loops. And then we'll just all tag those faces. Uh, give us our thickness, drag it out, mirror and weld. And mirror and welding is uh, very important when you start from uh, the quick cube and get it in as early as possible. And just a bit of, bit of detail that won't really be seen in the end. So we're just using our crease again. Set the tolerance, set the crease level down and then just crease and 
just continuing to um, to shape it out. So this sort of stuff here, I've, as I say, I've just a um, tiny little <laughs> photograph of a of a miniature um, version of this. Um, well, let's call it tarantula. I think it's like a um, it's this same weapon uh, mounted on legs, but I'm just uh, kind of customizing it to be mounted on the uh, on the roof of the tank. So we just Q mesh them out, and now we can just drag them back give us the thickness of the back and create that little chamfer at the bottom and crease again there so I can see here I'm going in I'm creasing just that, that tolerance and then just manually adding in some extra ones where I need them you can al always play around with the tolerance to get those in as well but sometimes you get unwanted ones so sometimes I, I find it just as handy to go around and manually just stick them couple in so we're going to cut in some edge loops here now for um, four little holes, inset holes for uh, screws and there's going to be a, an, inset, an inset kind of a tray here on the top similar to we had on the top of the tank so just make sure, making sure to get those in place and we just Q-mesh this uh, down and add in <coughs> our holes so just a uh, split vert with a uh, I think you yeah, have X uh, X symmetry on there, and then just Q mesh them down, polygroup oil, and then just click to repeat, repeat last. Now I'm just messing with the crease levels and the and the sub D levels, and you now it's a couple more edges there just to be just to be creased. I was going to append there, but I decided just to we'll take a couple of faces off this and just uh, Q mesh them out with a uh, control held down just to break them away. And uh, then Q mesh again straight away to give you a thickness on a polygroup island. And you noticed um, when, I, when I had tagged, I tagged the extra face I didn't want, so you can just alt um, click those faces again and, and untag them. You'll know you'll change the polygroup color. So more edge loops just for thickness. First I'm gonna um, hide those and then uh, split hidden. Just break them away into their, their own tool. And I had a crash there so uh, <laughs> I lost all that video footage from before that's why I had to do it again. So, just using the slide tool there, and slide and, and Q mesh, and just getting them into position, line them up so that they'll snap together and with the Q mesh. So, just slide again, slide edge, constrained, and get rid of those that we don't want. And we still have our center point for mirror and welding, and just clip the top off parallel that around so this is all I'm, I'm gonna hold shift here now just to snap that edge straight depending on where you start the edge from so Q mesh these down and then just bring that down further and then just clip it off rather than trying to line it up and now we'll just um, tag these and Q mesh the back out give it a bit of thickness crease again and do the same thing. Sometimes you have to um, fiddle around with those the sliders to update uh, the crease level settings in conjunction with your subdivision settings. So a bit more manual creasing. And I just noticed that uh, <laughs> that bird's a little bit off so usual OCD tweaking but it 
is actually good to have a bit of OCD when you're when you're modeling. Not too much though. So just taking a look around and seeing where we're at. And I will come back to that um, piece below there, the, the circular piece, and fix that all up. Just wanted to get these other things in place. Once I had the main formula in place there, I can always come back and fix it up. So same thing again, add a bit of thickness. And make sure you have uh, edge loops on both sides. And just Q-mesh them across to close them up. circular detail again I think I lost it there when I mirror and weld it and then I just noticed that you know just add something else in there just to make it look like it's melted properly rather than just kind of floating on top of it just a little detail to give it a bit of believability as to how it's attached and just hit that crease uh, button again. You can also uh, separate all your poly groups out and use the uh, crease poly group function, which can be very handy as well. I'm just doing the same thing here now. Uh, Q mesh and now hold the control and Q mesh and now again. And then just auto groups, hide them, split hidden. And I'll click down to select that, and we have a new sub tool. It's quicker, I think, than appending or inserting or anything. It's much quicker. So I'll tag these around. I, I do have a habit. I could use um, go in and just use poly loop selection here to select them as well, but or yeah, change it to poly loop um, as a ta as a the target makes no odds to me I'm used to just uh, tagging the faces it means I don't have to change the tool either so I just um, these are like the, the ammo boxes so same thing again always kind of checking um, the mesh when it's subdivided just to see how it's behaving and it's the very same thing again there. Q mesh with a control held to break it off. Um, Q mesh straight away again. And then just uh, hide those. Yeah, split hidden. And then you have a new sub tool. So we just uh, brought them together, joined them up, deleted uh, the edge loops either side we didn't need, and still uh, kept symmetry in the middle. Or symmetry because we have the edge loop in the middle. And just or adjusting and moving things about. And now I'm using them um, just like the insert the uh, Paul Gabriel's um insert train brush. I uh, used a piece of that as well, I think, on, on the lights of the tank. Just a um, it actually was almost identical to the piece that I could see on the on the reference that I was looking at when I was building this. So some of those um, insert brushes can come in handy. There I am again. Now I'm just checking through. That's the the Death Star Greeble Pack one that I converted from 3D Max. As insert brushes, <coughs> hundreds and hundreds. So this is all I'm doing here is messing about. Um, and seeing what I can get, and I end up changing it around. But um, you know, this is where you just have to sort of, if you're making things up, um, you just use your judgment and whatever, whatever you think looks good. There's no hard and fast rules. I'm just playing around, and don't be afraid to uh, control Z and, and redo, and control Z and redo, and until you're happy. So T 
think yeah this is just coming to the end of this part where I, I'll do the rest of this off camera because nobody wants to um, watch somebody filling about <laughs> trying to make a decision on what uh, insert mesh parts to choose but I like that one there that turned out really uh, suitable for, for what I'm using it for here so I'll just control shift uh, dragging it down scaling it a bit move it back in gives that kind of look uh, like a camera kind of a look film camera sort of a look and that is that right so this is where I'm up to now um, last I left it off I just added in a couple of more details a little few bits of details here in the front of this and uh, just some more insert meshes and a few extrudes out from the geometry and uh, I just put some some rivets in here as well and I just put this um, put an inset in the back and then set this into it that's from the the Death Star Agreeable pack which is the one I showed earlier on so um, yeah that's that's pretty much it so the next thing I'm going to do is um, <coughs> I'm going to reuse I have a this is um, I imported the, the Z tool from the, the model in the Plasma Boulder series and uh, just stripped it out and deleted all the bits that I want and now because uh, this is essentially now like the body of a of a bolt or so I'm just uh, I'm gonna modify this pull bits out add bits on change it round and uh, this will be our bolt or so and um, that's what I'm gonna do next Right, uh, yeah, I just sped this up a little bit more, three times I think this sped it up because it's a bit of a crappy part. Um, I'm just uh, modifying this gun so nothing can be done really here. So all I'm going to do is uh, I've broken bits off and deleted bits. And, um, I'm just going to close up those, uh, just tidy it up at the back there and uh, close up those holes. And then just uh, click on that poly group just to mask it and drag it out. And a lot of this gun won't be seen, it'll be underneath the cover. So, um, I didn't really know what, what I was going to do here. Um, <coughs> I, I didn't really have any reference or anything, so I just sort of winged it. And I was touching go there for a while, but uh, it turned out all right for, for what's going to be seen of it. So, I'm just I'm just messing about here, and, um, basically just experimenting, you know. experiment until I get it to work really and um, it didn't take that long I suppose um, it's just uh, sometimes when you're building things like and, and there's a stage you go through where it looks a bit shy for a while and, and you just have to kind of soldier on through and eventually it'll either come good or Well, that is the end. There's no R, you know. It's giving up isn't really an option. So, <laughs> not at this late stage in the tutorial, anyway. Yeah. So as I say, it's this is all just, um, you know, trial and error here, um, till I find something that um, I'm eventually happy with. So all I knew was that I, I needed um at the front part uh, just behind and below the, the barrel I, I needed some sort of magazine um, kind of a that went down and to the right of the gun if you're looking at it from the front and back into those ammo boxes on the uh, on the main body of the weapon so um, as I say yeah, I'm just messing around with things here seeing what I can get to work
so I probably should have been I just built these straight out from the gun I probably should have just um, broke them off as I usually do with, with the other pieces um, with the Q mesh uh, contro hold and control and just broke them off into a sub tool but um, it didn't really it didn't really matter it didn't really matter for this like um, in the end it, it turned out okay it's as I say you don't even see really see a lot of it as it's covered in, in a guard or kind of a bit of an armor plating which uh, we'll create in the very last maybe the last part of this tutorial so it break, broke that bit away there to its own sub till just it makes it makes it easier as well for selecting Sometimes you know you don't have to worry about grabbing uh, verts from, from other parts of the same sub tool, even though they're not connected. You can always just merge them back down together. Then it's no big deal. If anyone's used to three D modeling, well, in Max, for instance, you just uh, you can detach away the elements, or you can detach away to an object and then just attach, reattach it again. It's the same sort of thing. I think it's the same at Maya. Um, yeah, Maya and Moto have, have a little bit of experience in both modeling. Well, actually, in Moto, yeah, definitely. I've, I've done a, I did a project a couple of years ago that was just all in Moto. Maya, more animation. I haven't really done any modeling. I've only learned the animation tools, really. So I just used the bridge. Um, I copied off, uh, duplicated a face, a polygon there, moved it into position, I Q meshed it out, and then just deleted uh, two of the faces, made open holes, open borders, and then just bridge holes uh, with the interactive kind of spanning, and then just moving them about. Again, I could have probably did that a bit tidier, but I was kind of, I just wanted to get this done. I wasn't feeling it at all. Still just kind of trying out things here. This is all very um, ad hoc sort of modeling here. There's not a huge amount of, you know, for talk on into this, but it was one of the last parts of the tutorial, so I kind of just wanted to, just wanted to get it done. Plus it was. I don't know. I think it was starting to get bright out at that stage. It'd be up, been up all night. So, a man uh, needs his beauty sleep. Yeah. So just um, trying different things out here. Um, Basically, just to create, you know, more detail, more uh, visual interest, and um, you know, have it kind of looking too plain. Because this part of it, you actually do kind of see. So, I just wanted to uh, add a bit more um, complexity, sort of, into the into the D. Well, not complexity, but when somebody looks at it, it actually looks like it might be a complex kind of machine part. So I'm just using the um, Q mesh was going out along the normal, so it was too much messing about to get it to work. So I'm just using them um, that bridge two holes again, and it works out. Uh, works out nicely because we get the we get the curve as well for free. Even though I think I delete all those extra edge um, edge loops, but all this kind of stuff is quick to do. You know it's. There's more. Um, There's always lots of different ways to do these kind of things, and just sometimes you just you're in a rush to get something done, and you're just m using whatever tools you feel at the time are going to get it done. I'm really enjoying. 
enjoying the um, the clip tool. In certain circumstances, it's uh, it's great. <coughs> Just as long as you understand, like um, I think when the clip brushes first came out, people were, oh, what's the clip brush doing? It's wrecking me geometry. But it wasn't. It was. It was never. It was designed to do what it does. So once you understand kind of why it's doing what it does and you understand its limitations and where to kind of use it sometimes you try it out and it doesn't work but it's no big deal Control Z is your best buddy least happy with that bit that I was talking about earlier on that I should have um, duplicated and split to its own sub tool but, or even just built it again from a from a fresh quick cube but I didn't so I'm almost just <laughs> just kind of adding in some details so we can just I can just pull straight down past that stuff and kind of hide it. And then just a bit of, I pulled down there to clip it came out along the normal. So just to redo that. Slide the edge. I'm just kind of straightening things up. And for whatever reason, I'm having terrible trouble <laughs> with mask and selection. That bit at the back there, the, the trimmed face that's all triangulated, you know, that's, to say that's going to be hidden, you only can see that at the end. And now just uh, manually adding in a couple of creases where, where they need it. Still not happy with that bit there. <laughs> Still all wonky. Give it a bit of clipping. Flatten it out and a bit more clipping. Love that clip brush. Now I'm just um, covering this in here, kind of a bit of a bit of a hack, bit of a model and a hack here just to just to hide as I say it won't really be seen but just in case you never know no harm just to squish that in there and give it a bit of a mirror and welding and yeah it wouldn't I didn't don't even need to do any of that I was nearly gonna bring it in and I ended up just not bothering then and leaving it because as I say it won't be seen mm, second thoughts yeah that's it just get rid of those unwanted uh, creases and add back in where we do want it the 
increases. Checking from a few different angles. And now I'm just going to um, add the, like the ejection part um, for the ammunition here. Right, so I uh, just finished off the uh, the bolter there off screen. Um, I didn't really think anyone wants to watch more of that. I was just kind of winging it as I went. Um, so this is the the heavy bolters now so far um, assembled together. One more piece to put on, and that's uh, just the cover that goes over the gun now either side. So I thought I'd just build that maybe um, in real time, and then that'll be the very end of the series. So um yeah we'll get get going that's all. So I'll probably just um I'll change over to uh different material. So I'll probably just um I'll drop some of these down. I'm gonna take a part of this. So if I come down into the sub tool list and I'm gonna just duplicate that and just take that off to the side to duplicate and we're going to need, we don't need all this we're just going to need uh, let's see yeah I won't actually um, do that, I'll just solo it out and we're only going to need just need half of it here, so I'm going to clip it um, let's see, I'll clip it um, no, I won't clip it actually um, I'll just grab these and we can straighten them up and now if we could get all of these back in and be perfect and if these will just queue mesh straight back in that will work wonders for us I'll give it a try anyway try and just uh, might try and fix this manually now so I just want to see what mirror and wild side we're on yeah that's grand so I'll just fix this uh, manually just it's always a good idea if you can to uh, to reuse to reuse geometry repurpose it and um, you know it's just gonna save you save you a lot of time in the long run and don't let anybody tell you um, it's cheating <laughs> right, so I'll we'll take that down and I'll just uh, see if we can get the clip brush work on the back here Sorry, it's masked. I'll just undo that. And sorry, <laughs> didn't clear the mask. It's as usual. It's very, very late, in the middle of the night. And now I'll take this back in. the mask uh, invert the mask even just want to bring that right up to there oh that was weird I want to just get rid of this uh, we don't need this edge loop here so I'll just uh, get rid of that edge loop 
Uh, we just have some weirdness going on there. So I think I might actually think um, I'd much prefer if that was just square without this inset here. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to go around and I'm just going to stitch these points. Um, I can actually probably delete those faces. Actually, or what I might do is um, I might just mirror my other instead. Hang on a second, I'm just gonna forward you any of that. I can Q mesh all this stuff down just to get rid of it. And I'll just uh, select these. get that seam in the middle and I'm just going to recrease it at 90 or sorry at 45 just to get rid of the 50 just to get rid of those creases increase all crease and now maybe once more we'll mirror in X get rid of those bits as well and some of these up <laughs> probably would have been quick to rebuild but I'm being a bit picky now okay now I want to get rid of these loops in the middle Symmetry actually, and uh, just uh, drag these in, and I'm just gonna unsolder. See what width we need. Um, just bring it out for a second. Sorry, I'm asking. Turn off symmetry. I can I can always put on local symmetry. So um yeah, I'll actually just uh, line it up on that side and I'll just drag it out here now. Just that it's past that part. And we'll move it up and it's gonna be on the very top. I'll just actually it's going to be just behind that. And just down there a bit. And back a touch. And then that's about it there. Um, now let me see. I'm going to bring it all the way back. So, grab some of these. Loop back from here and slide and slide gently complete. And we'll 
slide that one back to the thickness we need and just um, yeah, I'll try and just bridge these across yeah, I'm just going to take these down together see how that works yeah pretty good and down again Yeah, that's just the way those um, faces are. Be too bad now we get this sorted out. And that's pretty good, I'm happy with that. Um, yeah, it actually adds a nice kind of a feature there at the back. Um, let me see, I'll just uh, give it an old crease. You can add in the other crease and after the end first I want to um I just want to get uh, all these the cutouts done here so we have one just where the ammo is gonna eject out so one about here that we can fix that after and then actually these are down way too far so let's move these up to about maybe about there yeah and then we'll add a couple more loops in so one maybe here could have just slid these ones over here because I don't even need these I could have just slid them over but not to worry don't really matter so now I'm gonna bring yeah I'll just I'll actually slide oh, it'll be quicker to just get rid of it and then add another one in so Q mesh this up and up again and this one up once Oh yeah, we've more detail there actually to add in. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the slice core so it goes all the way through, and it'll slice on the back as well so it can Q mesh holes in it. So I'm just going to um oh yeah, I'll just uh, undo that, and if I drag it out, and what is it again? Tap. hold control and uh, shift and then before you start dragging just press space and the B radius then will give you um, cuts the size of uh, the width of your brush so if I drop the draw size down and use slice curve it will give us two uh, loops there 
which is perfect. So, sorry, I want a little bit further up. One there, one there, and one there. Last one up a bit further. Yeah, that's perfect. Perfecto. And now we need another edge loop. Um, right there. And now we just uh, take this three and uh, Q mesh them in. And because we use a uh, slice curve, we get a hole all the way through because the other side they're exactly in the right place. Otherwise, you would have had to um, go inside and kind of guess where to make those cuts. So now I want to just uh, maybe fix these bits up here. So let's see the best way to do that. Um, I'm just going to saw that out for a sec. And we want to take the inside of this up all the way. So, I'll just uh, clear out, no, there's no mask. Clear the mask first. I just want to actually turn off that uh, D radius now. And clear the mask. And just hold the uh, control and alt. Because we don't want any of those ones, we only want these. So I'll invert that and just no that's not right. Unmask these as well. And slide them up. And that looks like it's that. So obviously we have a weird blob. So we wanna just do a little bit of crease in there and also crease here um, so crease edge loop complete mm, where is that gonna go yeah sure I can just get rid of this crease um, stop doing that crease edge loop complete and then uh, I think I might just yeah that's already creased Excellent. So now I'll increase this as well. And this. And now we'll just go in and just go to crease and get rid of the ones we don't want. So we don't need any of these. And get rid of these. Yep, that's the job. These guys and this one here. I think there's just one more over this side. And this one here and that is it, I think. So there's the top section of the gun made. And actually, what else do I want to do? B, I, and insert half sphere. And I'm just going to put a couple of, uh, maybe raise that to two. I'm just going to put a few, put a couple of them on, turn off solar there if you want to see what you're doing. And just hold in control again. And maybe. One more at the back here. And it should be it should be loads. Maybe one here as well. And I think that's Yeah, that's the job. Now I'll just uh mirror and weld. And it looks like we are finito. Actually, <laughs> one more thing to do, as always. 
and that is to go to where is it? Hatch. Do I have a hatch here? Maybe this one. Yeah, I'm gonna just take this this hatch and copy this one. Uh, I think so. Let me see. Hatch one neuro mild. Oh yeah, copy. So we're just gonna take a hatch that we've already used on the tank. Now if I can find. Alright, here we are. And we'll just paste it in here and we'll just modify it a bit. As I said, we're using them. Um, we're using we're using geometry. And where the hell am I going? Oh yeah, paste it back in here. That's shit. I'll click and scale her down. That wasn't a bad guess. Um yeah, so I'm gonna um take the clips take the clip and clip just clip it off maybe there and let's see what it's like if I clip it maybe there too much there and I want this to kind of look like a sort of a turret so bring it down slightly and I'm gonna line that one up so it's sitting in the center back a bit but yeah it was pretty much in the center as it was and then what we'll do is solder that out and I'll just uh, flat island and back to Z modeler, back to Z modeler, and Q mesh and set a flat island. Uh, take that in a nice bit, and then we'll just uh, like this will be the um, Q mesh part of the island. You know, this would be just like. Oh yeah, I have to. I'll put. I'll, I'll increase this again then. Um, ninety degree creasing. Geometry. Uh, increase. Uh, that's way too high. So. I'm gonna just. Uh, and just start Q meshing and just hold shift then to move it. And. Just move it down below that one, and that kind of oh, Jesus. Hey, when that happens, crazy. Right, that um, that pretty much sort sorts it out. So by mirror and welding that, um, it just gives us a more symmetrical look at the changes from the other one, and then you know we can play around and do whatever. Uh, it might actually. Um, in fact, what I definitely will do is um, put some kind of bolts in here because this is going to be bolted to the, the mount that we made. So B, I, and um, let me see, um, machine parts, industrial parts, M, and maybe none of them. B, I, um, M, steam gears, just something sort of these machine parts, maybe something here. Yeah, something like that. And we'll just uh, raise the bush size up. Maybe too big. <laughs> Way too big. And up there. And still too big for my liking. So maybe down to four. <laughs> too small, six. So maybe it should have extra bolts or rivets or whatever, whatever we call them. But it's space age, futuristic uh, thingamajigs. 
Um, that's pretty good. And I think we will call this finished. And um, yeah, I think I think we'll call that finished. Um, so yeah, as I say, you can just put, sorry I didn't narrate as much in this one now. It's just um, I think I'm boring myself out here with these tutorials, but you know you can see what I'm doing and, and it's all sort of repetitive stuff. Um, I'll just put that on to high. And yeah, uh, what I'm gonna do now is just uh, save this out first. Boulder turret save. Yeah, I'm gonna just assemble everything and uh, get them all together. But I'll, I'll leave it at this for the end of this tutorial. This one's gone on way, way, way longer than I thought it would. But I knew it'd be it'd take a bit of time to to, to model this um, whilst trying to record a tutorial and everything. And I was I didn't. Uh, I generally don't. I just generally do these tutorials. Sort of just, I just start recording and start building. I do a bit of editing and everything. Um, if I badly sort of fuck up, but um, generally I don't practice in advance. Or sometimes, like this one here, I didn't really have any pl plan for this. I had a a tiny little sort of a photograph of a miniature that was just from one angle, so I kind of guessed a bit of it. And, um, so. It turned out, I think it turned out pretty well anyway, I'm, I'm happy with it, so I uh, hope uh, if you did stay around for this long, that, uh, well obviously you must have enjoyed if you stayed around this long, but sure, uh, yeah, I thank you again, and um, hopefully there will be more tutorials from me in the future, and uh, thanks for subscribing, and <coughs> the, you know, the encouraging comments and all the rest of it, um, and the appreciation. Alright then lads, cheers, thanks, good luck.